Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to uncover the shocking stories of the top 16 worst alcoholics in Hollywood history. From A-listers to rising stars, we'll explore how their battles with the bottle not only affected their careers but also left a lasting impact on their personal lives. Now, let's get started. Number 1. Bela Lugosi, an American actor of Hungarian descent, was born on October 20, 1882, in Lugoj, Romania. His most renowned role was his iconic portrayal of Count Dracula in the 1931 film Dracula, under the direction of Todd Browning. Lugosi's captivating and spine-chilling performance as the vampire Count firmly cemented his status as a legendary figure in the realm of horror cinema. At the age of 48, he first assumed the cape and fangs for this role. Lugosi's acting career was intrinsically tied to the horror genre, where he excelled in depicting various supernatural and villainous characters in Universal Pictures' classic monster movies. In addition to Dracula, he left his mark on films like White Zombie (1932) and The Black Cat (1934). While his earlier career flourished, Lugosi faced personal and professional challenges later on. He found himself often typecast in horror roles, limiting his opportunities, and he grappled with substance abuse issues, particularly with morphine. Notwithstanding these hurdles, Bela Lugosi remained a beloved figure in the world of horror cinema. Tragically, he left this world on August 16, 1956, at the age of 73, succumbing to a heart attack. Yesterday. Well, do you start another immediately? I think, uh, the next week. You're Hungarian, aren't you, Mr. Lugosi? Yes, I am. My interest you to know that Transylvania still exists, and I've been there. And the name of that nobleman, of course, immortalized. Number two, Albert Finney was a renowned English actor born on May 9, 1936, in Salford, England. He was a versatile and highly respected performer known for his exceptional talent and a career that spanned over five decades. Finney's breakout role came in 1960 when he played the title character in the films Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, which catapulted him to stardom at the age of 24. Throughout his illustrious career, Albert Finney delivered remarkable performances in a wide range of roles. He received critical acclaim for his roles in movies such as Tom Jones, 1963, for which he won an Academy Award for Best Actor in Murder on the Orient Express, 1974. Finney's versatility allowed him to tackle both classic and contemporary roles on stage and screen. He also played memorable characters in films like Annie, 1982, The Dresser, 1983, Aaron Brockovich, 2000, and Big Fish, 2003. Albert Finney's contributions to the world of acting earned him numerous awards and nominations, making him one of Britain's most celebrated actors. He passed away on February 7. 2019, at the age of 82 from a chest infection. person you're preparing to be? No, I think not when you're preparing. I think there's a period of time when, for instance, when I was playing Scrooge, I noticed that I used to go home and complain if lights were left. <laughs> unsettling lockdown that was so difficult for everyone. It seemed to bring to the surface something that I'd been thinking about ever since the events of this story happened about 50. Number three, Lon Chaney Jr., originally named Creighton Tull Chaney, came into this world on February 10, 1906, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He achieved fame as an American actor, most notably for his iconic portrayal of Larry Talbot, the Wolfman, in the 1941 film The Wolfman. It was at the age of 35 that he undertook this legendary role, firmly establishing himself in the horror genre. Cheney's acting career spanned several decades, during which he embodied various monsters in Universal's classic monster movies, including Frankenstein's monster in The Mummy. Unfortunately, Cheney grappled with alcohol addiction throughout his lifetime, a struggle that sometimes impacted his professional journey. Despite these personal challenges, he remained a highly regarded figure in Hollywood. Regrettably, Lon Cheney Jr. breathed his last on July 12, 1973, at the age of 67 due to heart failure. How's Tag? What's he doing these days? When you left us, I sent him to my brother Clarence to raise. Oh, what's the matter? Did he get... That was a Vip's day. Just realize what a great, wonderful thing we're doing today. We're on television. Just think what a boon 
That Number 4, Gail Russell, an American actress born on September 21, 1924, in Chicago, Illinois, rose to prominence in the 1940s and 1950s owing to her captivating beauty and remarkable talent. She had her breakthrough moment in 1943 at the age of 19 when she starred alongside John Wayne in the film Angel and the Badman, propelling her as a rising star in the film industry. Throughout her career, Gail Russell graced the screen in various films, including The Uninvited, 1944, and The Ghost Ship, 1943. Despite her professional success, she grappled with personal challenges, most notably alcoholism, which unfortunately took a toll on her career and personal life. Tragically, Gail Russell's life was tragically cut short. She passed away at the tender age of 36 on August 26, 1961, succumbing to liver damage attributed to acute and chronic alcoholism, with aspiration of stomach contents as an additional contributing factor. Her legacy endures through her work in classic Hollywood films, and she is remembered for her talent and the trials she faced during her brief yet impactful career. Why was I afraid? Why were we afraid all this time? Buy me a sponge sugar. Gilly. And Mr. Stride, is he from Silver too? The sheriff, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. He was the law there for 12 years. Was? Yeah. Number 5. Marie Prevost was a Canadian-American actress born on November 8, 1896, in Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. She was a prominent figure in Hollywood during the silent and early sound film eras. Marie Prevost gained fame for her talent, beauty, and versatility in both comedy and drama roles. One of her notable roles came in the 1926 film The Marriage Clause. Prevost was a talented actress who worked with several leading studios of her time, including Max Sennett's Keystone Studios, where she was one of the popular Sennett bathing beauties. Unfortunately, Marie Prevost's career faced setbacks, and she struggled with personal issues, including alcoholism. Tragically, her life took a tragic turn, and she passed away on January 21, 1937, at the age of 40 due to acute alcoholism. Her story served as a poignant reminder of the challenges many actors faced during the early days of Hollywood. Prevost's legacy endures through her contributions to cinema, though her life was marked by both success and personal tragedy. We always sign him the big brown bear. Go! Go! We can't afford a scandal, so we're going... All right, Pat. Let's go, boys. Number 6. Spencer Tracy was an iconic American actor born on April 5, 1900, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest actors in the history of Hollywood. Tracist's remarkable talent and naturalistic acting style made him a beloved and respected figure in the film industry. Tracist's breakthrough role came when he portrayed Father Flanagan in the 1938 film Boy's Town, earning him his first Academy Award for Best Actor. Over his career, he won two consecutive Oscars for Captain Courageous, 1937, and Boy's Town, 1938. Spencer Tracist's filmography is filled with classics, including Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, 1967, where he starred alongside Katherine Hepburn, his frequent on-screen partner. Tracist's ability to effortlessly transition between comedy and drama set him apart in Hollywood. Tracy had a reputation as a consummate professional and was known for his strong work ethic. He was also a private individual who largely kept his personal life out of the spotlight. Sadly, Spencer Tracy passed away on June 10, 1967, at the age of 67 from a heart attack. His legacy lives on through his incredible body of work, and he continues to be celebrated as one of the greatest actors in the history of cinema. Court here, in our court. You cannot escape it in Boys Town. Okay. Mo, there was a fight near a barber shop this morning. Yeah. One of the first things we think about is a youngster named Jimmy. Jimmy was a kid suffering with cancer. He didn't have a chance. Number seven, Broderick Crawford was an American actor born on December 9, 1911, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 
he rose to fame for his portrayal of Willie Stark, a ruthless politician, in the 1949 film All the King's Men, for which he won the Academy Award for Best Actor. Crawford was 38 years old when he achieved this milestone in his career. Throughout his career, Crawford was known for his versatile roles in film, television, and theater, often playing tough and authoritative characters. He starred in movies like Born Yesterday, 1950, and had a successful run on the TV series Highway Patrol, 1955 to 1959. Crawford battled alcohol addiction, which at times affected his work. He passed away on April 26, 1986, at the age of 74 due to a series of strokes. I repeat, it's not too sweet. Canada Dry cools your thirst, it's a taste that can't be beat. It's not too sweet. It's a cold refreshing. Oh, yeah? Uh, can I help you? Uh, I'm looking for Marion Feinstein. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm Marion Feinstein. No, no, I'm looking for Marion Feinstein, the girl. Well, Marion. Number eight, John Wayne, born Marion Robert Morrison on May 26, 1907, in Winterset, Iowa, was an iconic American actor and film producer. He is one of the most legendary and enduring figures in the history of Hollywood, particularly in the Western genre. John Wayne's rugged masculinity, charisma, and commanding presence made him a beloved and influential actor. Wayne's breakthrough came in the 1939 film Stagecoach, directed by John Ford, where he played the role of the Ringo Kid. This role catapulted him to stardom, and he became synonymous with the American Western. He went on to star in numerous Western classics, including True Grit, 1969, for which he won the Academy Award for Best Actor. Throughout his career, John Wayne appeared in over 170 films and worked with many legendary directors, including Howard Hawks and Raoul Walsh. He became known for his strong, patriotic, and all-American characters, reflecting the values of his era. John Wayne's contributions to cinema extended beyond acting, he also produced and directed films. He was deeply involved in the making of movies that reflected his personal beliefs and his love for the United States. John Wayne passed away on June 11, 1979 from stomach cancer, at the age of 72, but his legacy endures through his vast body of work. That's my steak, Valance. You've given up smoking and you said you were allergic to tobacco and... Yeah, well I am, that's the sad thing, or I wouldn't have given it up, cancer yeah. or no cancer, yeah. but I... Number 9. Gig Young was the stage name of Byron Ellsworth Barr, an American actor born on November 4, 1913, in St. Cloud, Minnesota. He became famous for his role in the 1969 film They Shoot Horses, Don't They where he portrayed Rocky, a charismatic MC of a marathon dance contest during the Great Depression. This performance earned him the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor at the age of 55. Gig Young enjoyed a successful career in Hollywood, starring in numerous films and television shows. He was known for his versatile acting skills and appeared in movies like Teacher's Pet, 1958, and That Touch of Mink, 1962. Tragically, despite his professional success, Gig Young faced personal struggles, including battles with alcoholism and depression. On October 19, 1978, he died by suicide at the age of 64. His legacy lives on through his impactful contributions to the world of entertainment. Hello, Gig. Welcome to the reservation. Well, thank you. It's nice being here. And congratulations, Natalie, on your recent Academy Award nomination for a rebel without a cause. Well, thank you very much. You ever... Nobody loves an albatross. I haven't seen this before, Gig. You never have? No. Then I think you're in for a treat. Gig, you know, you have done so many movies and fact he won the Oscar. Number 10, Sterling Hayden was an American actor and author born on March 26, 1916, in Montclair, New Jersey, USA. He had a notable career in Hollywood, known for his rugged and imposing presence on screen. One of his most memorable roles was in Stanley Kubrick's 1956 film The Killing, where he portrayed Johnny Clay, a criminal mastermind planning a racetrack heist. Hayden was 40 years old at the time and gave a stellar performance that solidified his reputation as a versatile actor. Hayden's career spanned several decades, 
and he appeared in numerous films, including Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, 1964, and The Godfather, 1972. Aside from his acting career, Hayden had a complex personal life marked by his involvement in World War II as an OSS officer, his brief marriage to actress Madeline Carroll, and his struggles with alcoholism. Sterling Hayden passed away on May 23, 1986 due to cancer, at the age of 70. Could you spare that smoke, friend? I'll trouble you. Yeah. In a way, huh? Sometimes when you get too far, you miss part of it. Here, I don't miss nothing. This satisfies me, this place. Um... Number 11, Glenn Ford was a Canadian-American actor born on May 1, 1916, in Quebec City, Quebec, Canada. He rose to fame for his role in the 1946 film Gilda, where he starred alongside Rita Hayworth. Ford was 30 years old when he played the character of Johnny Farrell, a suave casino owner, in this film, which catapulted him to stardom. Ford enjoyed a remarkable career that spanned six decades, during which he showcased remarkable versatility across genres, from westerns like 310 to Yuma to gripping film noirs like The Big Heat. His talent and charisma made him a respected figure in Hollywood. While he faced personal challenges, including struggles with alcoholism, Ford continued to excel in his craft. He passed away on August 30, 2006, at the age of 90, leaving behind a legacy of memorable performances and contributions to the world of cinema. Alan Ladd was an American actor born on September 3, 1913, in Hot Springs, Arkansas. He achieved fame for his role in the 1942 film This Gun for Hire, which marked the beginning of his successful Hollywood career. Ladd was 28 years old when he played the role of Philip Raven, a hitman with a conscience, in this film. Alan Ladd went on to become one of Hollywood's leading men, known for his rugged good looks and stoic on-screen persona. He starred in several notable films, including Shane, 1953, where he played the titular character, in The Blue Dahlia, 1946. His performance in Shane earned him an Academy Award nomination. Throughout his career, Ladd's talent and charisma made him a popular and respected actor in both westerns and film wars. However, his personal life was marked by struggles with alcoholism. Tragically, Alan Ladd passed away on January 29, 1964, at the age of 50 from an accidental combination of alcohol, a barbiturate, and two tranquilizers. He left behind a lasting legacy as a classic Hollywood leading man, known for his contributions to the silver screen. I haven't any idea. If he knows what he's doing, he'll stand a good chance. Once we get into court, I can't give you any breaks. Do you understand that? Yeah, I suppose so. Probably, uh, Gilda with Rita Hayworth, who used to live, live right next door here. Uh, after the war, when I came back, after three years in, in Europe and in Southeast Asia. Number 12, Rita Hayworth, born Margarita Carmen Cancino on October 17, 1918, in Brooklyn, New York, was an American actress and dancer who became an iconic Hollywood star during the golden age of cinema. She is renowned for her beauty, charisma, and memorable performances. Rita Hayworth's breakthrough role came with the film Gilda in 1946, where she played the sultry and enigmatic Gilda Munson Farrell. This role solidified her status as a sex symbol and leading lady in Hollywood. She was 27 years old at the time. Throughout her career, Hayworth appeared in numerous successful films, including The Lady from Shanghai, 1947, and Pal Joey, 1957. She was known for her dancing skills, particularly in musicals like You Are Never Lovelier, 1942. Off-screen, Rita Hayworth faced personal challenges, including a tumultuous personal life and struggles with alcoholism. She was married multiple times, including a well-publicized marriage to Prince Ali Khan. Tragically, Hayworth's health declined in her later years due to Alzheimer's disease, and she passed away on May 14, 1987, at the age of 68 from Alzheimer's disease. But what I wanted to discuss with you is this. You know, Charles Lawton started his Bible readings on this show. Well, he is with me in the picture. I know. Uh, until I, uh, oh, well, I guess 
You see, I didn't become a star overnight. Number 13, Mary Astor was an American actress born on May 3, 1906, in Quincy, Illinois. She had a prolific and versatile career in Hollywood, spanning over five decades. Astor is celebrated for her talent, beauty, and memorable performances in a wide range of film genres. One of her most notable roles came in the 1941 film The Maltese Falcon, directed by John Huston, where she portrayed Bridget O'Shaughnessy opposite Humphrey Bogart. This classic film more helped solidify her status as a leading actress in Hollywood. Mary Astor's career began in silent films, and she transitioned smoothly to the talkies, earning an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in The Great Lie, 1941. She continued to impress audiences with her acting prowess in films like Meet Me in St. Louis, 1944, and Hush, Hush, Sweet Charlotte, 1964. Off-screen, Astor faced personal challenges, including a highly publicized custody battle for her daughter and struggles with alcoholism. She chronicled her life and career in her autobiography, My Story, published in 1959. Mary Astor passed away on September 25, 1987, at the age of 81 from respiratory failure due to pulmonary emphysema. You know that they'll gossip twice as much when they find out that what you told that old scorpion isn't true? Yes, but... Oh, I, I never thought about that. The big paper man. All wrapped up on your boss, I know. <laughs> you should see my boss. He's so old, the short skirts came in 20 years too late. Number 14, Montgomery Clift, born on October 17, 1920, in Omaha, Nebraska, was an American actor renowned for his exceptional talent and intense performances. He is celebrated for his contributions to both stage and screen during the mid-20th century. Cliff's breakthrough role came in the 1948 film, The Search, where he portrayed a traumatized World War II soldier who bonds with a young Czech boy. This performance earned him his first Academy Award nomination at the age of 27. He went on to deliver memorable performances in films like A Place in the Sun, 1951, and From Here to Eternity, 1953, earning several more Oscar nominations. Known for his brooding, introspective style, Clift was regarded as one of the pioneers of method acting in Hollywood. He was a trailblazer in portraying complex, psychologically layered characters. Clift's career was marred by a car accident in 1956 that left him with physical injuries and led to issues with pain medication and alcohol. Despite his personal struggles, he continued to act and deliver remarkable performances. Tragically, Montgomery Clift passed away on July 23, 1966, at the age of 45 due to a heart attack. He left behind a legacy of powerful acting and remains an enduring figure in the history of American cinema, remembered for his contributions to the art of acting. Sisters? Four. Oh, then you're a family of ten. Yes. What occupations do your brothers have? But to understand it, one must understand the period in which it happened. There was a fever over the land. Number 15, Larry Hagman was an American actor born on September 21, 1931, in Fort Worth, Texas. He became a beloved and iconic figure in television, best known for his roles in two highly popular TV series. Hagman's breakthrough and most enduring role came as the charming and conniving J.R. Ewing in the long-running soap opera Dallas, which aired from 1978 to 1991. His portrayal of J.R. Ewing, the ruthless oil magnate, made him a household name and earned him critical acclaim, including several Emmy Award nominations. Before Dallas, Larry Hagman gained fame for his role as Major Anthony Nelson in the sitcom, I Dream of Jeannie, which aired from 1965 to 1970. His comedic timing and chemistry with co-star Barbara Eden made the show a classic. Hagman's career spanned film, television, and theater, and he continued to work in the entertainment industry throughout his life. His charming and often mischievous persona endeared him to fans worldwide. Larry Hagman passed away on November 23, 2012, at the age of 81 due to complications from acute myeloid leukemia. 
He is fondly remembered for his memorable roles in Dallas and I Dream of Jeannie and remains an iconic figure in the history of American television. First of all, all the things you've done and people are going to remember you as KRD. Makes me feel like I deserved it. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. The bad guys finish first, don't they? Pacific. That's right. In 1951. That's right. I met your wife here. Yes, I did, and got married here, and I lived here for five years. I was in the American Air Force for four. And dated the Collins sisters, Joan and Jackie. Yeah. Number 16, William Holden, born William Franklin Beadle Jr. on April 17, 1918, in O'Fallon, Illinois, was an American actor known for his exceptional talent and charismatic on-screen presence. He became a prominent figure in Hollywood's golden age and enjoyed a successful and enduring career. Holden's breakthrough role came with the 1950 film Sunset Boulevard, where he portrayed struggling screenwriter Joe Gillis. This role catapulted him to stardom at the age of 32 and earned him an Academy Award nomination. He went on to star in numerous classic films, including Stalag 17, 1953, for which he won the Academy Award for Best Actor, The Bridge on the River Kwai, 1957, and Network, 1976. Throughout his career, William Holden displayed versatility by taking on roles in various genres, from war films to comedies. His performances were marked by their depth and complexity. Despite his professional success, Holden battled personal demons, including alcoholism. Tragically, he died on November 12, 1981, at the age of 63, after a fall in his home. Holden's legacy endures through his timeless filmography and the mark he left on the history of cinema as one of its most talented and respected actors. I was in the engineers when I got to England. Then there was Ruth and her letters. She's quite a letter writer. Anyway, I was there and she was here. And Going into Italy and I wrote Conservationist on it and the fellow looked at me and he took the pencil and crossed it out and wrote actor. So, Changed well, I... Thanks for joining us where we unravel the untold stories behind the stars. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more intriguing tales from the entertainment world.